G'day everyone, I'm Jazza, and if you're new to this channel, the only thing you really need to know is the time. It's tabletop time. Ooh! It's always tabletop time here, baby. We have a lot of fun. Today, we're having fun with the base for my very goofy character that I created for this collab. So, of course, if you want to see the process of me making this monstrosity, go over to my main channel. I'll link to it in the description, and also check out the other amazing participants to the Monster Bash. It really was just such a fun project, really big collab, really simple and fun and free premise where everyone got to express and create in whatever way they felt that suited them. And obviously the way that suits me is pretty just, you know, weird. But I'm gonna start by backtracking a bit and just showing you how I built the base that I have because I follow a few key steps for a lot of my different little bases and, and miniature diorama-y terrain things and it all really starts with cork. There's a lot of different terrain types and biomes that I wanna create projects and dioramas in but cork's a great one because obviously you can rough it up and pick it apart and layer it in a way that creates a really cool rocky texture. And frankly, that's kind of all you need to know about where we're starting in this video because I'd done all that cork layering and picking apart, glued it together with super glue. It really seeps into the cracks and dries very quickly with this stuff. So it's pretty easy and a little messy to work with, but it works great. And one thing I've done that I really love and actually want to do more of whenever I make characters or units or whatever that I uh, just, you know, want to make more of, I guess, is create a standalone character or unit base but also a diorama that that can sort of slot into. And I made a, a sort of magnet system where it snaps into place and holds this monster in place in a diorama that can be taken out to use on the tabletop. Now I'm gonna say, as a foundation, I, I love this. Like, honestly, it's just painted cork and I sort of painted the lake rivery bit blue. And even with just some flat painting and dry brushing, I think it looks really good. And it's certainly passable, but my approach is gonna to be to take this as far as I can and use some fun stuff I've been really Really looking forward to mucking around with. Starting off with UV curable resin. You see, I have this loose fishy that I had from the beginning of my little diorama inception, wanted to make leaping out of the water. And obviously the way to do that is water effects. And I've seen some cool mini painters I follow on YouTube make little dioramas using like cut out just packaging plastic as a, a base that you can use UV cured resin on top of to create cool water and ice effects. So I wanted to give this a go. I cut a bit of a splash out of the water shape, but I didn't want to stick it to a side of the tail. I sort of wanted to slot it into the middle of the tail. Now this is where I'm trying to be pretty fearless, but I'm maybe being a little too stupid. I try and soften and cushion the fish while I cut it to slot the plastic between my cut in the tail. And as I'm doing this, I'm getting glue everywhere. I'm tearing off my carefully put down paint job. I'm really not doing this in the most elegant of ways, but I didn't know how else to do it. I just persisted until eventually I had it stuck in as a support and in the shape and direction I wanted, but I have a bit of prettying to do for the messing up I did at the back of its tail. So I thought I could at least cover it up a bit with the UV cured resin. And I wanted to muck around to see how this works before I applied it to the fish. I also have this other stuff lying around, Vallejo water texture because you know I have been buying every hobby thing under the sun that I want to muck around with so I tried to see if there was a way to use these in combination with each other or if it dried and how fast and what it looked like and after a bit of experimenting I found pretty quickly that you know they're not super compatible and the water texture effect I don't know if it needs overnight to dry but it was just sort of sitting there wet and annoying me whereas the UV cured resin cured like hard within like 30 seconds at least the small amounts I was using it was so cool I also mucked around with color and here you can see that it's not a great mix and I realized after a bit more experimentation later it's because I mixed in acrylic blue ink. It was still usable so I just sort of went on and started my experimenting just using that mix that I'd created starting to shape out that uh, splash effect and add a bit of color and a little bit more of an organic shape. And this is where it got really really fun. I said about creating drip and splash effects from the fish in the shape and direction of the splash and the the speed at which this stuff cures is like, okay, it's really tricky to work with. And as you can see, it sort of drips all over the place if it doesn't cure in time. But if you grab it in time, like literally, you know, like a few seconds as it's dripping, it hardens mid drip and it just looks so cool. So it became this really fun challenge of trying to get these water effects as they're mid motion to freeze, which is just such an amazing concept when you realize that actually this, this shape of the 
water splashing behind the fish as it jumps out of the water is built on a foundation of motion that is stopped in time. I just love that. I did all those drip effects with just the, the clear UV resin, obviously, because I was focusing on the shape. And I went in after to color it and knowing obviously the acrylic ink didn't mix very well, I moved on to alcohol inks. And these, it turns out, are amazing. Now, obviously I've done a lot of work with alcohol inks on my main channel. So I know how the stuff works. And I also know I can be a little braver. Like if I stuff up or apply too much, applying just the isopropyl alcohol can pull it back or remove the color entirely. So this enabled me to get pretty brave and create some really cool colors and splash effects and layering with the water effect on the fish. I set about to create an awesome splash out of the water and I was so damn happy with how that turned out. And I'm just getting started, baby. So I put all the U UV resin stuff to the side for now because I knew I needed to do that at the very end when I'd cleaned up the mess I was about to create all around the earth and the grass on the rest of the diorama. Starting off with a dark earth diorama paste from AK Interactive that I sort of smudged and dry brushed in throughout the lower levels of our layered ground and in some of the cracks. This has a really cool muddy look. I haven't used this stuff before. Frankly, most of the stuff I'm gonna be using in all my dioramas and terrain builds, at least for a while, are gonna be stuff I haven't used before because I've just got everything and I'm so excited to try everything out. And this immediately added a really cool, fairly realistic appeal to the overall model. Then I went around some other areas with uh, a Citadel effects paint just on some of the higher areas just to create a bit more of a mud effect rather than a too much of a rocky effect. And I have a big variety of awesome tufts and realistic additions to use to really bring my diorama to life in a bit. And this is due to the generosity and sponsorship of Gamers Grass, which we'll get to in a moment. But before applying all the tufts, I thought I'd create a little bit of a soft blankety foundation of greenery for the plant life to rest on. Just to sort of bring up the vibrancy and liveliness of, of the whole diorama. Mixing a bit of PVA, water, and a little bit of green paint, spreading that through some little cracks and crevices and topmost areas of the diorama and sprinkling on my previously created colored and dried sawdust as a homemade flock. I also wanted to make sure I varied the hues of my diorama and grass a little bit too, leading towards a browner sort of dry area at and behind the monster on the, the little hill there, mainly because I thought it could be very green around the river and having longer drier grass around the monster would create some visual interest and also make it look like he's sort of sneaking in through some scrub to get to the fish he's trying to catch. The next came the grass and the details and the tufts and I have so much to work with because Gamers Grass have sent me a big chunk of their product and my god it, this stuff is all amazing. Now I can't use all of it in this one video and I've so many projects that so many of these different types of tufts and grass are gonna be amazing for. There's alien grass and there's dry scrub and there's tiny flowers and there's like temple ruins pieces and, and oh, it's just so good. They're such a great product of such a high quality and so much variety that I know if you're into this sort of thing, you're gonna absolutely love them too. But something that you may not know that they do are these pre-made bases. You can get them unpainted, just sort of cast resin, highly detailed bases that just look amazing and you can detail and paint them yourself to suit your own projects. But if you don't have much trust in your creative skill level or just don't have the time, they have fully painted and textured and grassed up battle ready bases, complete with tufts and flowers, snow and pigment dust. It's just amazing. The amount of detail that these come with out of the box. They are a glue your painted mini on top of it sort of base. And whether time or confidence is the thing you lack in, these battle ready bases are just gonna bring your minis to life. So next I had the delightful task of picking the right sort of colors and lengths of grass and, and tufts to fit in my piece. I certainly wanted some flowers to bring the whole diorama to life and add a lot of color. And I wanted a mix of long, dry and green grass. They had some really nice grassy looking ones and also some really nice, I guess you'd almost say like reed or like long water grass type grasses. I don't know the names of grasses, but the, the ones that look like they're in, in like riverbeds and stuff. <laughs> Having picked the variety that I wanted to mix together, I had so much fun applying these. So much fun that I might have gone over the top. I don't know what the right amount is, but it feels like the right amount to me because I was having so much fun. Also, I gave myself license to go a bit ham on this because frankly, 
I mean, like, okay, he's like a monster and he's approaching a little river and it, it's, he's in the wild. It's all overgrown and a bit scrubby and there's flowers and uh, I was having fun, okay? Stop judging me. I wanted to make sure some of the rock was visible so it did look organic in different ways. But at the same time, frankly, one of my motivators for adding so much of this amazing tufts and grass stuff is my sawdust looked so bad in comparison. It looked like sawdust next to these amazing tiny tufts and pieces of, of terrain. And and uh, the solution to that was to cover all of my crappy sawdust with the Gamers Grass Tufts. <laughs> now I will link in the description of course to Gamers Grass's website where you can check out their products but what I and they really want to encourage you to do is check out your local hobby store and see if they stock Gamers Grass and get it there because the ethos of Gamers Grass is that the hobby really should be centered around the community in your local hobby store. They want to support the local hobby store and they want you to support your local hobby store and I hugely respect that. I think that's just a really admirable way of creating a product but also keeping it so focused on the community that makes the, the hobby itself possible. So you can go to their website and you can check out a section where you can see what game stores near you stock it and if you don't see your local hobby store there why don't you just go talk to them if you frequent a lo local hobby store have a chat with them ask them to reach out to Gamers Grass you can just contact them through the website they're a fantastic product they serve so many different hobbies from miniature railroads to wargaming to just dioramas and general effects and as you can see, as my piece is coming together, it really removes a lot of the work and guesswork out of making something lifelike and eye-catching and stunning. I mean, just look at this. Oh my God. I mean, I just love it. It feels so alive and fun. And with it feeling ready then for me to move on to the river, there's a couple of things I wanted to do. First, I wanted to be able to reliably remove my monster piece. And because he might be reasonably regularly removed from the little diorama set piece, I went through and cleaned up and solidified all the grass by picking out some loose bits of tufts that were a bit disturbed and then after generally shaping and straightening the bushes and, and laying things out in their final form I went through the model and the little characters base with just a touch of hairspray mainly around the edges so that they didn't sort of fall off and into the resin later on or as I'm pouring it and also so they don't sort of fray at the ends where they're gonna be handled the most. Next, it was time to create my pond. And I really wanted to get a clean, clear edge. So my experimental way of doing this was actually to use monster clay. I microwaved it to soften it and created a hard edge in that area. And I did this because I knew I could just sort of gently sculpt and push in those edges and the areas connecting to where the resin might seep out just to make sure that there was an airtight area that the resin wouldn't leak out of. With that in place, I mixed a batch of my UV resin with some alcohol ink and poured. And this was a little nerve wracking and I did get some of the blue resin on some of the plants at the front, which I just tore off because obviously if that cured, then that was going to be a problem. And at least even though the resin cures very quickly, it's actually quite workable, um, I'm assuming, for an infinite period of time as long as UV doesn't touch it. So I did a layer of this resin, uh, cured it, and then built up another layer of clearer resin. I dropped in a few little bits of alcohol ink and just moved it around with a toothpick to see if I could get some cool sort of water motion effects and stuff. I think it worked reasonably well. In total, I did three layers, the top two being clear, but with little bits of ink mixed in. The idea being I wanted it to feel like a deep pond so that if the, the top layers were sort of clear, but they look through to a really deep blue underneath, it would create that sense of depth. I left the UV lights on it, curing it for a good hour or so before I pulled the clay away. And yeah, it left clay residue on the end, which I sort of scraped off. But then after a bit of a Dremel and a polish, I actually started to get that beautifully clear edge I wanted and it was making me so happy. <laughs> Why does this stuff make me so happy? I don't know. It just does. It's just fun. Now, even though I had removed that end and I was really happy with the results so far, but I, I did want to just add that little bit of texture and detail. So adding a very thin layer of uncured UV resin on top, I went through and used that Vallejo water effect stuff. I didn't know if this was any good or better or worse than just using white acrylic paint that wouldn't mix in with the resin but it'd probably have frankly pretty much the same effect. Using my brass toothpick I sort of mixed it in around the edges of where the water would be rippling and hitting the pond or the fish creating a bit of a sense of motion and just a little more visual interest in the water area. I let it cure, replace the plants that I'd previously messed up with my uncured resin when I started and finished up with a final extra bit of polish and cleaning up of the very end of the riverbed. And 
there it is, my finished completed monster bash project. I spent a full day on just doing the diorama terraining and effects and the resin stuff. It was my first time using UV cured resin and obviously the most I've ever used all these tufts and all of these things together I think made a stunning effect. I love it. And let's just before and after for a second here. Like, I don't think it looked all that bad before with just the cork and the, the painting, but when you let yourself play with things that you may not have played with before, or just really let yourself explore and experiment, you can create really vibrant results. And what I've created is a little diorama that I am super proud of. Plus, he has the added benefit of being a unit I can play a tabletop game with. Again, what that is, I don't know, but let me know in the comments. And what's his lore? Like, what's his horror? origins. Give me a story for this guy and a name. Come on guys, help me out here. But if there's anything I know, we're going to see him around at some point in the future and it's going to be fun. I can't tell you how happy I am with this. It's majestic. I think that's the word for it, especially the little, we've got the little tushy there. Got the little fish jumping out of the water. First time using UV cured resin, I want to use this so much more. First time going so crazy on a terrain piece with so much vibrancy and color and detail and I'm just really proud of the result. I really hope you enjoyed seeing what I made and taking that as far as I possibly could with the terrain that these guys were on. And I'm sure you'll agree, it brings it to life in a way that it just, it's hard to even explain. And this is why, frankly, dioramas and bases for miniature projects are my favorite bit almost, because they shape so much with relatively little effort. And it's a very organic process and it's just really fun and different. It's the reason why all of my Space Bears miniatures that I crafted for so long have such big craggy bases with little details on each one and some little props and painting the snow and doing the little tufts and details on all that stuff. It's like making miniature dioramas for every unit and making an actual miniature diorama is just a whole nother level of fun. So like this video, comment on it, subscribe and hit that notification bell and you're just going to get more and more awesome. Thank you so much for watching and joining in the process. This has been Tabletop Time. I have been your host. Until next time, I'll see you later. I don't know how to sign off on this channel. Do we have an official sign off? It's usually an awkward, confusing rant about how we don't have a sign off. I'm not clever enough to think of something on the fly. So I'll just...